Several experiments were completed during Apollo 13, even though the mission did not land on the moon. One involved the launch vehicle's SIVB, which on prior missions had been sent into solar orbit once detached. The seismometer left by Apollo 12 had detected frequent impacts of small objects onto the moon, but larger impacts would yield more information about the moon's crust, so it was decided that, beginning with Apollo 13, the SIVB would be crashed into the moon. The impact occurred at 77 hours 56 minutes and 40 seconds into the mission and produced enough energy that the gain on the seismometer, 117 kilometers from the impact, had to be reduced. An experiment to measure the amount of atmospheric electrical phenomena during the ascent to orbit, added after Apollo 12 was struck by lightning, returned data indicating a heightened risk during marginal weather. As a joke, Grumman issued an invoice to North American Rockwell, prime contractor for the CSM, for towing the CSM most of the way to the moon and back. North American declined payment, noting that it had ferried three previous Grumman LMs to the moon without compensation. The CM was disassembled for testing and parts remained in storage for years, some were used for a trainer for the Skylab rescue mission. Apollo 13 was called a successful failure by Lovell. Mike Massimino, a space shuttle astronaut, stated that Apollo 13 showed teamwork, camaraderie and what NASA was really made of. The response to the accident has been repeatedly called NASA's finest hour, it is still viewed that way. The accident convinced some officials, such as Manned Spaceflight Center Director Gilruth, that if NASA kept sending astronauts on Apollo missions, some would inevitably be killed, and they called for as quick an end as possible to the program. Nixon's advisors recommended cancelling the remaining lunar missions, saying that a disaster in space would cost him political capital. Budget cuts made such a decision easier, and during the pause after Apollo 13, two missions were cancelled, meaning that the program ended with Apollo 17 in December 1972. The 1974 movie Houston, We've Got a Problem, while set around the Apollo 13 incident, is a fictional drama about the crises faced by ground personnel when the emergency disrupts their work schedules and places further stress on their lives. Lovell publicly complained about the movie, saying it was fictitious and in poor taste. Houston, We've Got a Problem, was the title of an episode of the BBC documentary series A Life at Stake, broadcast in March 1978. In 1994, during the 25th anniversary of Apollo 11, PBS released a 90-minute documentary titled Apollo 13, To the Edge and Back. Following the flight, the crew planned to write a book, but they all left NASA without starting it. After Lovell retired in 1991, he was approached by journalist Jeffrey Kluger about writing a non-fiction account of the mission. The resultant book, Lost Moon, The Perilous Voyage of Apollo 13, was published in 1994. The next year, in 1995, a film adaptation of the book, Apollo 13, was released, directed by Ron Howard and starring Tom Hanks as Lovell, Bill Paxton as Hayes, Kevin Bacon as Swigert, Gary Sinise as Mattingly, Ed Harris as Kranz, and Kathleen Quinlan as Marilyn Lovell. James Lovell, Kranz, and other principals have stated that this film depicted the events of the mission with reasonable accuracy, given that some dramatic license was taken. The film changes the tense of Lovell's famous follow-up to Swigert's original words from, Houston, we've had a problem, to, Houston, we have a problem. The film also invented the phrase, failure is not an option, uttered by Harris as Kranz in the film. The phrase became so closely associated with Kranz that he used it for the title of his 2000 autobiography. The film won two of the nine Academy Awards it was nominated for, Best Film Editing and Best Sound. In the 1998 miniseries From the Earth to the Moon, co-produced by Hanks and Howard, the mission is dramatized in the episode, We Interrupt This Program. Rather than showing the incident from the crew's perspective as in the Apollo 13 feature film, it is instead presented from an Earth-bound perspective of television reporters competing for coverage of the event. In 2020, the BBC World Service began airing 13 Minutes to the Moon, radio programs which draw on NASA audio from the mission, as well as archival and recent interviews with participants. Episodes began airing for Season 2 starting on March 8, 2020, with Episode 1, Time Bomb, Apollo 13, explaining the launch and the explosion. Episode 2 details Mission Control's denial and disbelief of the accident, with other episodes covering other aspects of the mission. In Delay to Episode 7 Inches, the BBC explained that the presenter of the series, medical doctor Kevin Fong, had been called into service. In advance of the 50th anniversary of the mission in 2020, an Apollo in real-time site for the mission went online, allowing viewers to follow along as the mission unfolds, view photographs and video, 
and listen to audio of conversations between Houston and the astronauts as well as between mission controllers. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, NASA did not hold any in-person events during April 2020 for the flight's 50th anniversary, but premiered a new documentary, Apollo 13, Home Safe on April 10, 2020.